Hey Google, turn on my van heater. Hi Greg, sorry I can't help with that right now. Besides, why don't you shift your lazy ass and go and do it yourself? After all the van is just in the drive. Okay so it's raining. Well, do a who? Are you a man or a mouse? No I will not turn on your van heater. What did your last servant die off? That dipshit's getting too big for her cloud. So, Siri, uh, Alexa and Google Home Assistant may not be able to turn on your van remotely, but you can do it with a humble mobile phone by building a text switch, uh, which is what I did. I'm going to show you step by step what I did, uh, just in case it's of any use to you guys out there. Uh, and you might be thinking, oh, hey, why don't you just shift your lazy ass and get out and press the on button? Uh, well, of course, everyone's got different use cases. And some guys use these as their daily driver, their works vans. And wouldn't it be great uh, while they're rushing around getting to breakfast just to send a text so when they get into the van, it's all nice and toasty and defrosted, good to go. For me, it's a little bit different. I'm in a camper van um, and I do a lot of music festivals, some of my entry wristbands there and each, each end of the season gets a little bit chilly so yeah when you're waiting for the final act to do its encore send a text and when you get back to the van at the end uh, nice and warm carry on the festivities uh, and why not because I'm not driving am I? Uh, so anyway it's not rocket science uh, if you've managed to install a diesel heater you've probably got enough skill to do this except you will need to do a little bit of soldering and it doesn't have to be brilliant and you'll see from my video that I'm doing now, my soldering ain't great, um, but it needs to be good enough so you get a good uh, a contact without a, a dry joint. And if you just want to turn it on remotely, you'll need to do two bits of soldering, two tags. If you want to turn it off remotely as well, depending on the controller, you may need to do four or you may need to do two. That will become clear as we go through this. Um, so now, now I need to give a shout out to Hank, Hank one of the admin guys here because he did it before me and pointed me in the direction of the GSM module that I'm going to be using to build this uh, switch and I'll show you later on and he uh, himself was given some help by a guy called Steve Murphy I think it was so yet yeah, the community come together helping each other out so that's fantastic. In addition Hank sent me the pictures of his work because I hacked a LCD controller, the traditional black type, by going into the remote of that, not into the controller itself. Hank had the old-fashioned rotary controller. There's no uh, remote on that, so he had to go direct into the back of that. And then he upgraded to the one with the temperature dial on, on the front and went direct into the back of that as well. So between the three, uh, hopefully it'll give you a, a good uh, a range of what, what can be done, because of whatever controller is out there, it's the same sort of principle. Okay, so I think that's enough of the waffle. Let's get and do it. Okay, so let's have a look at these GSM modules. Okay, so um, that's mine. Uh, the company's called GSM-UK, a British company, and comes with very good instructions you download from their website. And thanks to Hank for putting me on to these people. Um, that there, as I said, is a single channel one, uh, and you can get a dual channel one. In fact, you can get a quad channel one as well. Um, that one is 20 quid. Uh, if you want it already mounted in a case, it's another three quid. I chose not to do that because I've got to also mount up the guts of the remote control because I'm not going straight into a controller and we'll look at that later. Um, but that's that's the kit. So let's have a quick look around then. So there is where you put the power in, either 12 volts or 24. And it's non-polarized, so it doesn't matter which way is plus or minus on that one. That there is the relay output. So that's effectively a switch. It's going to turn things on and off. Uh, and then, just see it poking up, is the SIM card. Um, I've chosen to use the 02123 contract because, in fact, it's not a contract. It's a pay-as-you-go, and there's no minimum spend each month. You only pay for the text. It's 2p, I think, a text. Um, so you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute. You're sending a text to that. Why have you got any charge at all? Well, you can program these modules to talk back. So when you send a text to it, it sends a text back saying, yep, message understood. So you know that the heaters are uh, going to be fired up and I'm going to program mine up to do that. So that's a quick tour and um, we'll look at um, uh, program that up later on. So time to get soldering, time to do that hack. And I'm uh, going to start off by hacking into the remote to drive the LCD controller. Then we'll look at the rotaries after that. 
So the first one of these I bought wouldn't pair and others on the site have found that. Uh, the, the one I did pair I got from eBay, I think it's about four quid. Here is who I got it from. Uh, and it had a sticker on the back saying tested 433 megahertz, which is the common frequency for remote controls. Okay, there's a sticker. So uh, the, the, the button we need to tap into is the unlock button here. Because uh, that's the one obviously fires up the machine and I'm going to now just take this apart so we can have a look in the guts of it Okay, now I must remember which button I got to tag onto it's the unlock button Which is the one that fires it up So I've got to be careful not to forget which one because I'm likely to do that So what I'll do is I'll take the back off remove the silver buttons and the plastic cover to reveal the micro switches and it's that one there so I'm going to mark it up straight away put a mark on the switch so I know which one I'm playing with now tease out the battery and then very gently let's see if we can get that PCB board out it looks like it's just held in the clips so it should be gently be able to pop it out and have a look at it all right so there's the switch we've got to tap into and there's two solder points each side of it and I'll zoom in on that now to get you a close-up view so there's the two terminals we need to solder onto it. First of all, they were just retaining clips, but they are the actual terminals for the switch. Uh, the one on the right there, not so bad as exposed. The one on the left is actually quite tricky because it's confined space. So you've got the other switch right next door to it. So a little bit of a steady hand in doing this one, I think. Okay, I'm going to start off with a bit of a bodge. I'm going to try and enlarge the size of those solder terminals so before I get a wire on there. Uh, fortunately the chips are at the other end of the board, the ones that I think will get damaged, I think there's some sort of fuse thing down at this end, but um, uh, I just want to enlarge the size of those contact areas before I get the wire on it. Now no doubt there's one or two smart Alex out there just desperate to sort of comment on my soldering skills, no need to do that, but if you want to send in an actual video of you doing it with this actual remote control, then great, add that to the comments. But yeah, here we go. I think we're almost done. Enlarge those terminals ready for the wire. So putting those wires on now and later on I'm going to add two more wires onto the battery terminals to get the supply in but I'm going to just test it with the battery to start with. Right, yeah, looks good. So connect those two wires now to multimeter. Just want to make sure that switch is still good. Press it down, little micro switch there while I marked up and yep, good, got continuity. Excellent, excellent. So right, in the van then, uh, there's the LCD control on the right, the remote on the left, let's touch those two wires together, and oh, the blue LEDs come up, and yep, the LCD control is fired up, rock and roll, we're in business, I think we've hacked that remote successfully. Okay, so let's look what Hank done with the rotary controller. Uh, in fact, there's two. Uh, first one Hank had was the traditional black rotary one, as shown here. Uh, now Hink's use case required him to be able to turn off as well as on and uh, so he needed a dual channel. There's no remote on these so you're hacking directly into the back of the controller itself and uh, so you take the back off and this is what it looks like. Okay so um, this is it with the, it, the back taken off and the PCB exposed. Um, the on buttons, one on the left there, the one on the right is the off button, and you can see the location of the terminals that you've got to solder onto. More space to be uh, get out on this one, a bit easier to get to, I should imagine. Um, but of course, if, if you're like me, you just need an on only, and you've got a single GSM module, it would be the left one, which is the on button that you'll be soldering into. Uh, so that was the old style, but then Hank upgraded and got uh, the new style with a new heater, which looks like this. Very groovy got the temperature display in the middle but note there's a single button uh, on this one uh, and you press it one short push for on and a hold it longer for off a bit like the LCD controller the old style LCD controller so you need a single channel uh, GSM module to hack into the back of this one and you're just going to program it differently you can program a long hold and a short hold and we'll talk about that when we look at the controllers so this is what it looks like on the inside 
And I remember uh, reading on Hank's post that he found this one a bit easier than the old style one. And you can see he's tagged straight onto the back of the printed circuit there. Uh, you only need a single control, a single channel controller, because it's uh, one button. So if you've got this style, take a good look at the picture there, look at the two tracks you need to tag onto, uh, and you can solder straight onto the back of that. Now I should have said, if you've got the LCD controller and you're going into the remote like I did, and your use case requires you to be able to turn off remotely as turn on, do exactly what I did on one button, you do the same on the other button. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so let's look what we've got here. We've got uh, the GSM module and the remote module. And what I've done is I've soldered on to the battery terminals a supply that I can plug into a 12 volt socket in the van. I've then taken a, a loop off of those two terminals, taken it round to put into the supply of the GSM controller. Uh, that's polarity independent, doesn't matter which way round you go. But I tell you what's really handy, both that and that is 12 volts. So the little batteries are 827 to 12 volts. So of course then the wires I took off of the GSM, sorry, the remote control, go into the GSM relay so, uh, terminals there. And if you had the rotary, that would be the wires you tagged into the back of the rotary controller goes into there. So now we're all good to go, I think. And what we need to do now is just um, program up that uh, GSM controller. Okay, time to program up the controller then. Um, now what I would say is read the instructions because they're actually they're very, very clear and they're in English, not Chinglish. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through those instructions but only the bits that are relevant to the van heater. You can do a couple of other things with these switches that aren't uh, really relevant. Um, so uh, since, I, since I've done that last thing with you, I've um, packaged up my kit. It's now mounted and it's in its own case. And uh, yep, that's right, it's a Tupperware container. It's a now I'm classy, but actually it worked very well for me because I've got the gubbins there. And on the right hand side, I've got um, storage where I can keep the power cable, which will plug in there, and the aerial, which you screw on the top, and a spare sim because actually uh, this, you can put a different sim in here. So I'm going to keep a, one for the E network in there just in case the O2 is not available wherever I am. Uh, if you mount it permanently in your van, um, I should have said, uh, obviously you're going to try and put in a spot where you get a signal, but if there's any doubt, the company that you buy these from, they also sell remote uh, aerials that you can put permanently fix on your roof and run a cable down. Okay, so that's what I'm using. Right, now when you put the sim in, um, get it the right way round. Uh, this is what it should look like, and there's a little diagram on the little controller, if you look at it, it shows you that the clipped off corner goes on the right hand side as you're looking down on it. Okay, right, so I think it's now time to uh, power up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm about to switch on, plug it in. He, down here you've got three LEDs, one is the power, the middle one is a, a boot up light, it flashes until it's booted up and then goes out. And that one there, it just uh, flashes when the actual relay has been operated. And in addition, you've got a little red LED on the GSM module there uh, that flashes about once every second while it's trying to find a network. And once it's found a network, it will flash about once every three seconds. So let's plug it in, see what happens. Okay, so the power light's on, the startup is flashing. Uh, that's going at one a second. Uh, so the main module is good. That lights extinguish, and now, yep, you see this now. What's every three seconds? We should be good to go. Okay. Okay. Now I'm just going to send a, a message to the controller, so you can see what's going to happen. I'll show you how I do it later. Okay. So I've just sent a text message now, and what will happen is hopefully, there it goes. Okay. You saw that flash. You saw two things flash. One is up here. It was to say that um, the relay been operated, it been operated for about one second, and actually because I've got it wired up to the uh, remote control, you saw my remote control come on. Okay, so that's basically what happens there. Now, how does it operate? Let's look at how we program this. Okay, so this is the text message that you send to turn your heater on or off. You always send RS, then you put in channel one. That's uh, the channel number. If you've got two buttons, unlike the old style rotary, you might have a two there, one for on, two for off, for example. Then you push, put in the number of seconds you effectively want to put your finger on that button for, and it's got to be in two digits. So if it's a quick push to turn it on, you might say 01. 
and if you've got a single button controller but you have a long push to turn it off you might say oh four for example easy as that okay so previously i sent a one second one i'll now send that four second text to the controller so you can see what happens right hit send There you go, that might be the message you send to turn off. Now, one very important thing is it is case sensitive. You must do this in uppercase. If you send the lowercase letters, it will not respond. All right, so if that's what you want to do, easy piece limb squeezy, you're now good to go. However, if you want the thing to talk back to you, you have to do a bit of programming. In other words, to send a command saying, yep, message understood. Also, as things stand, if anyone's walking by and they happen to know the number of your controller and they happen to know the commands and they happen to be a little bit malicious, they can actually turn on your uh, heater for you. Highly unlikely, but that is possible. But if you set your phone up as an administrator, it puts in some security because it ties the controller to your phone alone. You can actually program it to do a second phone or a second SIM. Won't look at that today, but if you get that far, it's in the instructions and it's quite easy. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to power down first. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay, now I've zoomed in on these jumpers here. You see there's a set marked all, uh, and it refers to the manual as on. I don't know why, but it's all on. And it's got a little plastic thing over the top. That's effectively joining the jumpers together. On the other side, you can see two exposed jumpers and they're marked as set up. You can see that all is are closed and set up is opened. So to get into administration mode to program this, what you do is you take the jumper off. Okay, you can see it's now off and you put it onto set up. Now some of the boards they send out actually have got little micro switches a lot easier to use but it's the same principle. Once you've done that power up and then you telephone you phone your control board you don't text it you phone it and it will hang up on you because obviously it's not a phone but it now knows it's in programming mode. Okay so what you do now is you move this back to all and the first thing you need to do is to give it your telephone number so it knows who to respond to and we'll look at that now okay so to program in your telephone number you just type in tt then your full mobile number without any spaces hit send okay it now knows your number and it can respond to you okay so you can get your controller to talk back to you so you know that it's received your command to turn heater on and off and to switch that mode on you simply type in capital R lowercase o n for on capital R o n for on if you don't want to do that if you change your mind because you don't want to pay for the text message you type in r o f f r off send Right then, to the van with my posh bit of Tupperware. This is genuinely the first time I've uh, tried to fire up to the work, so yeah, the moment of truth. Okay, so I've plugged in and I've got a network signal. Let's give it a go. Okay, so we're in the van. I've got the start command RS101 ready in the SMS. Press send, let's see what happens. Boom, we're on. Haha, <laughs> we've done it. Job's a good one. Yeah, so, job is a good one. And um, as I said right from the very beginning, it's not rocket science. So if you think a tech switch may be of use to you, have a go. And hopefully one or two things in this uh, video may have helped you on your journey there. Um, thanks, of course, again to Hank for his input and, and all the admins in this group. I've had a really good experience in this group. Got art tips and ideas, a lot of support. And it was this group that gave me the confidence to buy the heater. Uh, in the first place. You know, we have so much more fun than those Russian and German fanboys and girls, don't we? So it just leads me to do two things. One is to say, uh, Happy New Year. And secondly, I need to fire someone. Hey Google.